Hey guys, it's Neelidge. Welcome back to Simple Biology. Uh, today we'll be doing Chapter 1, Lecture 3. So we're going to go over the organization of the body. Um, so I have been getting um, some questions about this whole simple medical terminology uh, thing. Uh, specifically, what textbook am I, mod am I modeling my lectures after? Uh, so I just like to for everybody's benefit uh these lectures are modeled off the gw um intro to medical terminology first edition textbook so let's begin so organization of the body so the human body is organized into five levels so you have cells which is the basic structural unit of the body tissues which is a combination of cells that are alike organs which are a combination of different tissues that work alongside uh, each other to perform a specific function in the body. Body systems, uh, which are a group of organs that work alongside each other to perform a specific function in the body. And ultimately, you have an organism, which is a life form that's made up of all the previous mentioned units, uh, which coexist with each other to maintain life. So, cells are really like the big thing you learn about in medical terminology because, um, at, le at least in this chapter, because uh, you don't really go in depth into all the systems until you move later on in uh, your class. But uh, the cells are the basic unit of the body. Uh, cytology is the study, formation, structure, and function of cells. The study of the formation, structure, and function of cells. Uh, cells have organelles, which are structures within the cells that uh, provide specific functions. So you can sort of think of a cell as being its own body, like uh, the human body. So, cells have organelles, just as we have organs, and our organs do things inside of us to help us maintain life the same way. Cells have little parts inside of them to help them maintain life. So, every cell has a um, um, cell membrane that separates the cell from its exter external environment, and all these me these membranes are semi-permeable. So, what that means, what semi-permeable essentially means is that it will let in, um, it will let in what it wants, and it will uh, prevent things from coming in that it doesn't want. So, uh, for example, say you had a um, like a coffee filter. A coffee filter can be seen as a semi permeable semi permeable membrane because uh, when you pour in your hot water into a coffee filter, the water that passes through is that what passes through is now coffee, but the coffee filter or your me the or the membrane in this sense does not let the actual coffee grounds pass through so uh the nucleus is an organ organelle in the cell and it is the controlling structure uh, of the cell its main function is to control the reproduction of the cell uh the nucleus of every human cell which is what you're probably going to learn about in a medical terminology class uh, because, you know, you want to learn about humans if you want to become a medical health professional. Uh, but any, anyways, uh, the nucleus of every human cell, except for gametes, which are uh, reproductive or sex cells, so your sperm and your eggs, contain 46 chromosomes, which are arranged into uh, 23 pairs, 22 of which are exactly alike. The other pair is either an XX chromosome or an XY chromosome, uh, which are known as your sex chromosomes, and they are responsible for determining the biological sex of a human. So an XX um, pair would be for someone who's a female, and an XY pair it would be for someone who is a male. So every chromosome uh, contains genes combi composed of uh, deoxyribonucleic acid, better known as DNA, which is responsible for everyone's genetic, uh, un un excuse me, unique genetic makeup. Uh, the cytoplasm is a semi-fluid material that is in every cell that holds uh, the organelles, and it is where chemical reactions in the cell occurs. Um, and then cells can look different from each other based on their uh, uh, because they can be specialized uh, for their purpose. So you have two cells here. You have a neuron, and you have a muscle cell. Now you can clearly see. A neuron and a muscle cell look nothing alike, and they may even have different organelles, but their main premise remains the same. They've served uh, to perform a specific function in the body, and they have most of the things that 
more previously more was previously mentioned that a cell has. So here is what you might think a cell looks like, and um, this is definitely a normal cell you would see in your body. Uh, you know, you have it's shaped like a like a ball, but it has all the things you typically see in a cell. You know, if you've taken, I assume everybody who watches these videos are uh, is in biology. Uh, has taken biology or is in biology so you probably have seen this model once or twice and this is a perfectly normal cell but like as you saw before these cells and this cell looks nothing alike but they still follow the same premise of what a cell is so cells uh cells do reproduce asexually uh in a process that is called cell division so each cell looks like the next but there the exception of this would be in meiosis which we'll talk about uh which we won't end up really hitting that hard in simple med terms but uh, if you want to learn more about this you can watch there might be a video uh, on simple bio about it I'm not too sure but you can definitely watch a video about it and you'll if you take uh, freshman level biology or even AP biology you will definitely learn about meiosis but um, cell division in itself uh, serves to promote growth uh, or development of a cells as well as replaced old dead or dead or damaged cells. So if you have a cell that's you know not really functioning right, or if there are cells in the body that are pretty old or uh, on the way to get old, or if you have a dead cell, you're going to create new cells to, to replace the old cells. Uh, most cells reproduce through a process called mitosis, but uh, sex cells, which are seen here, reproduce through a process called meiosis. What is the main difference? Well, when a normal cell reproduces, uh, with a normal human cell, you'll have um, you have cells with 46 chromosomes. But in meiosis, your cells left only have 23 chromosomes. Why is that? Because your meiosis cells are used for sexual reproduction. So when, say you have a sperm cell and an egg cell, when those two come together, those combine to make your 46. So tissues, organs, and systems. Well, as, as mentioned before, these were all mentioned before, but we'll go over them again. So a tissue is a group of similar cells that will work together to perform a specific function. For example, uh, muscle tissue. Muscle tissue. If you have different muscle cells, they'll all come together to make muscle tissue. Uh, multiple s tissues will come together to create an organ. So you have the heart. So the heart has cardiac mus uh, cardiac muscle tissue, connective tissue, etc., uh, etc., et and all those come together to form one sing one single organ, which is your heart. And then multiple organs uh, will come together to create a system. So an excellent example of this would, your, would be your digestive system. So you have things like your pancreas, your gall gallbladder, your stomach, your esophagus, uh, your large intestine, your small intestine, uh, small intestine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And those all come together to form uh, to form what is the digestive system. And all the systems in your body will come together and form what is you, the human, the organism.